So, Amanda has spoken, um, an interview with NUTV today, and um, I have to say it was a fantastic interview, lots of things said um, that maybe just sort of clarify the position of Newcastle United and their managerial process and processes in general. Let's have a look. Hi everybody, I'm Paul, back again with another video, second of the day, and uh, well, I just had to react to this really, um, fantastic interview from Amanda Stavely on NUTV, you can catch it on YouTube, uh, but I just wanted to sort of drop my feelings on it, and put a couple of clips from the interview on here, um, she's very, very happy obviously about Eddie Howe, that's what the main interview was about, um, and this is what she had to say on the managerial appointment. We are so excited about um, Eddie joining and heading up uh, um, the first team. He's an incredible coach. Uh, we did a very robust managerial search and uh, we were very proud um, to appoint you know, such an incredible manager to lead Newcastle United into the next phase of its development. So there you see, very, very happy with Eddie Howe. Um, but what she also went on to say was about the um, the process of getting the new manager in. You know, we all thought what was going on, um, you know, behind the scenes. It turns out that they'd already spoken to Eddie Howe when Mike Ashley was still running the club. So, you know, we always used to think, um, what's going on behind the scenes with Piff? Are they doing anything uh, regarding the plans that they have for the club should a takeover happen? Uh, well, that's obviously been answered today. And the answer is yes. Uh, Amanda Stavely quite clearly saying that they spoke to Eddie Howe uh, during Mike Ashley's days, uh, but they had to go through a process. They had to find the best man. They had to go through an interview procedure and do things properly. Uh, and this is what she had to say on that. We, we um, and um, particularly PIF are a very process-driven organisation as much. And one thing we've learned in football is that things move incredibly quickly. Sometimes... Uh, when we often have our eye on the right manager, I think we'd um, you know met and, and spoken with Eddie some time ago, and, and uh, we discussed you know his appointment actually back when when Mike was uh, running the the club. Uh, and but we have to do a full search of of, of the marketplace and find the the perfect fit. Uh, Eddie is the perfect fit, and we we you know we. We couldn't have imagined um, bringing in a, a better manager. He's so dynamic. Uh, and I think one of the things when we, we do a lot of analysis on managers from a, on a, um, analytics and data, and he scored so highly on across all mediums. Um, obviously, he's had an incredible impact on Bournemouth. And having someone who's grown a, league, a club from League Two all the way to the Premier League is is an incredible achievement. So there you go. Amanda's very, very, um, you know, very forward and telling the fans uh, what the process was and um, that herself, PIF and the Rubens, they all have a process to go through and they wanted to do things right. Uh, and I think that's the main thing that we need to look at here is they wanted to do everything right and make sure they've got the best man for the job. And without a doubt, they feel like Eddie Howe is the best man for the job. And that can only benefit us. She then goes on to talk about how exhilarating it's been taking over the, the, the Newcastle United um, football team and, uh, you know, telling us about the sleepless nights, very, you know, 24 hours a day hard at work, uh, but also telling us about how exhilarating it's been and um, how much they're loving it and the connection that they feel with the fans already. The fans, you know, have played a big part in all of this. Um, she's been thoroughly welcomed into Newcastle United. She's delighted with all the, the response from the fans. And one thing she does say in this next next clip is, you know, if we make mistakes, we'll still communicate with the fans. We'll admit to the mistakes and we'll put them right straight away. Now, when have you ever heard that from the previous uh, ownership or anything like that? Nothing at all. This is what she had to say, which really did um, give me a lift when I heard it. Well, I... <sighs> pretty exhausting uh, other f I mean just every 24 hours of every day except for a few maybe three four hours sleep uh, my um, it is exhausting exhilarating the welcome we've had in Newcastle has just been so so extraordinary and so special uh, and so uh, I think we just don't want to let anyone down and and one of the things I, I want to do is, is be able to communicate with the fans and say if, I, if, if we do make mistakes, we will quickly own up to them and put them right. So, um, you know, it's, the, it's been 
uh, a challenging five weeks, but um, but a very rewarding five weeks. So there you go. That's Amanda saying there that, you know, we'll make mistakes. They're bound to happen. But at the same time, it's how we put them mistakes right. And we will put them mistakes right by what we do by communication with the fans and put the mistakes right straight away, which is which is incredible. She then goes on to talk about um, the, the the family that she feels at Newcastle, that everybody is is really hard working um, and they're wanting to put a process in place very, very quickly. Everybody seems to be on board, um, that she's met most of the staff, which is which is incredible, really, given that it's five weeks since the takeover. Um, and we, you know, people have been complaining on social media about what's going on at the club, you know, especially when it came to getting a new manager in. But I think now we've all seen, you know, or heard what's been really going on. Amanda's met all the staff. They've got processes in place. They've got an infrastructure in place. And, um, you know, this is what she had to say on that very thing. Well, I mean, we've been through analysing every area. Investment is needed at every area. We've spent time with the academy teams and we've spent time uh, with the foundation we've, uh, and all of the other departments. And it's clear that it, there's a lot of investment needed. And we're trying to talk to the, the team, uh, the teams here. And um, it's a big family and everybody's incredibly passionate about their jobs. I think one of the things I have felt is this extraordinary feeling of being in, in a family and people come to you very quickly and suggest uh, opportunities and better ways of working, more efficient ways of working. So I think that's, a, uh, that's at the, our first starting point. Uh, obviously, getting Eddie in place was critical. Finding that uh, appointment was the most important thing we could do. Uh, and then now we, we need to make sure that the infrastructure that surrounds the first team, you know, whether it's new training facilities, uh, we're looking at building uh, a new academy, and that's something which we, we, was on the agenda as well. So there you go. You know, Amanda's very, very keen to stipulate that Eddie Howe was the first... Um, part of the jigsaw, if you like, and and the rest now is going to have to fall into place uh, reasonably quickly to get us out of the problems that we're in. Um, so it was absolutely amazing to hear Amanda talk there about processes already in place. So a lot has clearly been going on behind the scenes that uh, obviously us fans don't know about, which is fair enough. There's obviously going to be a lot of stuff going on um, that we don't know about to, to put things right at this football club, uh, which has been urgently needed, quite frankly. Now, the final thing that Amanda goes on to talk about, which I think will give every Newcastle United fan a huge lift, is the January transfer window. Um, I'll let you hear what she says, uh, but it's very, very... It gives me hope, basically. We're, um, we've got a robust business plan and we're developing that uh, every week. Uh, January is amongst us, so we're preparing for the January transfer window. It's not a a window that we would ordinarily want to invest in because you probably don't get the right deals but that's something that is important at the moment and preparing for that and then preparing uh, alongside working alongside all the teams I think we've got a lot of meetings set up over the next few weeks um, with the staff and we, we look forward to working with everybody uh, but I have to say everyone's been just so incredibly welcoming we're very privileged, uh, Merzad and I and, and the team and PIF and Ruben family to have just a s fantastic supporter base and, uh, and, uh, and, and team here at the club. So there you have it, Amanda talking about the transfer window and how they wouldn't ordinarily look to the January transfer window to get the best deals in. But given that the football club are in the position that they are, uh, they will do everything they can to avoid relegation. So they are already looking at the January transfer window. And I'm sure they've already spoken to Eddie Howe about it, about what he wants to do um, and the players that we should be targeting. So um, I did a video this morning. If you haven't seen it, go and watch that about who I think we should target in January. Um, make the spine of the team a little bit better and a little bit stronger. Um, but I was, again, just thoroughly impressed with what Amanda Stavely had to say. And she's clearly loving it um, up here now. She's clearly loving the whole um, shebang of Newcastle United, if you like. Um, but what impresses me is the hard work that's gone on, you know, behind the scenes. Nobody knows how hard they, they are working. Eddie Howe is doing the same footballing-wise, going on the pitch, running with the players, working hard with them. Um, and behind the scenes at St. James's Park, they are always hard working, uh, a big family there, doing what's right for the football club. And that's what we haven't had for so long. And for Amanda to sit down, be interviewed and keep us informed of what's going on, I think is fantastic. That's all we ask for as fans. 
just to be kept in the loop and being, I mean, feeling part of the club again. Uh, I, I don't know whether you fans get that either, but I, I do feel like they're making an effort to get the fans um, back to the club and feel part of the club again, which is what it's all about. And, you know, going forward, this can only be a really good thing for everybody associated with Newcastle United. So let me know down below in the comments what you thought of Amanda's interview. Um, are you actually even more happy with what's going on now? Are you satisfied about the managerial process that they went through um, and what she had to say about the transfer window, etc.? Because that's thoroughly exciting me seeing who we'll bring in in January. Uh, but if you have enjoyed the video, guys, please, please, please do hit the like button. Um, help us continue to build the channel. Obviously, you know, two videos today takes a lot of work behind the scenes. So if you are happy with the channel and you like what you see and you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing as well. Uh, it means the world to us to see those subscribers going up as well. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.